What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. So I've got an iPad Pro 2018, which I've been using for basically everything university related for my second year at medical school, and I absolutely love it. It's completely changed the way that I take my notes, that I organize everything to do with my university life and I couldn't say more positive things about it. Now this whole time for my note taking app, I've been using Notability and I found it to be a really good app for taking notes, for organizing all of my different lectures, tutorials, case-based discussions, etc. It's just been an overall great user experience. However, I know that there's another app called Good Notes 5 that a lot of people use and there's sort of this matchup between Notability and Good Notes 5. So what I decided to do was for a whole week of lectures, tutorials, and case-based discussions, I was gonna solely use Good Notes 5 in order to test out the Good Notes experience and then make this video comparing the two. All right, so let's switch over to Good Notes and take a look at that app. So starting off with the good things about Good Notes 5, and trust me, there were a lot of things that I actually really enjoyed. I will love any feature that saves saves me time. For example, the first thing that you'll notice is over here in the top right, you have three different colors that are permanently set over there in the top bar. And of course you can change these to whatever you want. Let's say I wanna put red here, I can put green here. This is very, very useful because when I'm writing a note, usually I'll make my titles in blue, right? So let's say title of slide, and then I wanna to switch to gray. If gray was one of my set colors up here, then in just one click, I can switch to my gray pen and continue writing. As in Notability, I spend so much time, for example, if I'm writing and then I wanna switch colors, I have to go to orange. Then if I wanna switch colors back, I need to go here and go to blue for my headings. It takes time. You might think that these small clicks aren't that important, but if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of those clicks per day, per lecture that you're writing, then it really adds up. So I really like the fact that there are some permanent colors at the top of Good Notes 5. I personally think that that's a fantastic idea. The second amazing time-saving tool on Good Notes 5 is their rubber function, which as you can see here, um, it has an auto deselect function. So what that means is that when you click the rubber and um, you decide to rub out something, for example, I just rubbed out that line, as soon as I'm done rubbing it out, it switches back to the pen, which is again, such a good efficiency and time-saving thing. Let's say I'm writing hello and I accidentally misspell it and write hella, you click once on the rubber, once on the A, and it's already back to the pen and I can write hello properly. Whereas in Notability, let's say I was writing hello and I misspelled it. Oh God, that's disgusting. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's say I was writing hello and I misspelled it. I'd have to go up to the rubber, erase the A, go back to the pen, and then continue my spelling. Again, you might think that these things don't take up time, but really I'm doing this action over here maybe hundreds and hundreds of times a day. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about in Good Notes is image manipulation, image importing, and stuff like that. I find their image manipulation software way, way, way better than Notability. So for example, let's say I'm here and I want to import a screenshot that I just took. For the sake of this video, let's screenshot some of my notes in Notability. I screenshot them here. Let's say I go back to Good Notes. Where is it? Perfect. So now, of course I can drag and drop like this, but sometimes that little thing in the corner disappears after a little bit of time and I don't quite get there. So let's just delete it for now. Let's say I was writing. I wanna import a picture. So you go up to this image tab over here and already right here in the top right corner, you can see all of my most recent images. And so it's very easy for me to quickly identify this one over here as the screenshot that I just took. I tap it once and it's already imported into my Good Notes file. And also notice how quick that import was because I'm gonna compare it to Notability later. Look at how instant that import is, super, super fast. I can easily manipulate it from the corner. I can make it bigger, smaller, I can rotate it. And if I wanna crop it as well, I can just tap on the picture, click crop here and automatically make it bigger or smaller as I wish click done and that's done really quickly. So the image manipulation in GoodNotes is so much better. Also pay attention to the fact that here as this image, there's no white borders as you will see there is in Notability. If I put the picture here, there's no white borders over here around the image. There's nothing there, which is really, really great. In comparison to all of this, let me show you how Notability works. So Notability, let's say I wanna import that exact same screenshot that I just took. Let's find some white space here. So. In order to import an image here, you need to go to the plus, and then you need to go to photo, and then you need to go to recently added, then you need to click your image, and look at how long it takes to import. Again, not an objectively long period of time, but when you're doing this hundreds of times a day, it all really adds up. And look at this white space that it leaves behind it next to the writing. You see this over here? I dislike this a lot. It leaves this white border around the image when you import it into Notability. Now, if I want to manipulate this image, First of all, 
you have to switch to this T tab up here. So from the pen to the T, and then you can click on the image and manipulate it. And in order to manipulate it, as you can see, every time I move it, there's this lagging period. Whereas in GoodNotes 5, there's absolutely none of this. It just immediately moves around. On top of that, if I want to crop this image, which I always want to crop the screenshots that I take, look at the process I have to do. So I've imported the image, I have to hit edit, go up here to the cropping tool, crop as I wish, then hit done. Again, it's such a slow process. And once I move it, you'll see that there are these white borders still all around the image. So yeah, image manipulation and notability, I think is probably one of its worst features. I wish that they would improve it and I'm sure they will in the future update, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. All right, now let's talk about the highlighting tool in GoodNotes. Just for comparison, let me show you guys the highlighting tool in Notability first. So here's my highlighter. I've selected this light blue color. If I wanted to highlight this sentence down here, I can do so. And it basically just gives you a free range, uh, transparent color that you can draw over your notes. So it doesn't really stick to the words that you've written. It doesn't really make a straight line. It's sort of just like the pen, but it's translucent or transparent. Now, if I move over to GoodNotes 5, you'll see how much better the highlighting feature is there. When you highlight a sentence, it automatically straightens it out. As you can see, it makes a nice straight line that adjusts to the height of your notes and your writing. And I find this so much better. Look, if I don't draw the straightest of lines, it'll automatically straighten it. And I find that so useful. It just looks so much more neat and it looks better and is easier to go through than Notability. And then let's talk about something that's actually really important. If you take a look at my Notability, you'll see that I have something like 300 different files in here. Let me see at the very top, 337 different files. So there's a lot of different notes that I've taken here over the last couple of months and there's a lot of information to search through. So for example, if I wanted to search for a lecture on um, kidney diseases and glomerul glomerular nephritis, okay? Let's say I wanted to search, I'll search glomerular, all right? And let's see what comes up. No results found. Okay, fine, let's search kidney. Okay, so it gives me searches of the titles of lectures, so anything that's written in text. The amazing thing about GoodNotes 5 is that it searches within the handwritten notes that you've made, which I just think is absolutely incredible. So for example here, you can see that my handwriting is pretty horrible. Um, it's definitely not neat by any means, but let's say that I wanna search for this word here, tension, all right? Let's see if it'll find it. Honestly, how incredible is that? If you ask me, this word does not look like tension, yet GoodNotes still manages to find those words. I'm honestly quite happy that I found some of the words previously when I had been searching through my notes, I could never find what I wanted. Um, so it's actually good to see. So I guess the searching of the handwritten notes does work, but not as good as GoodNotes 5. All right, so those are some of the things that I really enjoyed while using GoodNotes 5. Now let me talk about some of the things that I don't like as much. So first things first, as you'll see while I'm scrolling through this page here, there's just like a noticeable lag. You can see that some pictures and images take a while to load. It's not smooth when you're scrolling, when you're moving around and manipulating this software. Now the second thing, and this probably isn't too major for a lot of people, is that it just kind of looks outdated to me. I don't know about you, but all these icons at the top here, it feels like this was an app that was made a couple of years ago and they haven't updated it and made it for the modern era. But yeah, just to me, it kind of looks out of date. The next thing that I wanna mention in GoodNotes is sort of their hierarchical structure or organization of the notes. So in GoodNotes, how it works is that you have these sort of, you have these folders over here and then you have these um, files within them. And then within the files, you have all these different pages or these are notebooks, I guess. I personally don't like this as much as the Notability equivalent. So in Notability, you have these uh, bigger sections called dividers, which is what these little drop-down menus are. Then within dividers, you have subjects. So respiratory disease one, respiratory disease two. And then within those subjects, you have all these different notes. So for example, I have important stuff, uh, one of my case-based discussions, some lectures over here. And I find this level of organization a lot more neat, a lot more simple and intuitive to understand and work through. And so it works better for me. I personally really like Notability's organizational structure than GoodNotes. And then the last thing that I wanna say about GoodNotes 5 is that it's lacking a sister or brother app on Mac iOS or on PC, um, where you can look at your notes online on the computer, which is kind of frustrating for me actually. With Notability, what I'll often do is have some of my previous notes that I want to look at open on my computer, and then some other notes that I'm currently writing open on my iPad. 
And that way I can have both at the same time. But if I'm somewhere without my iPad and I wanna look at my notes on my laptop, then I can't really do that. All right, and I think that concludes everything that I wanted to say about GoodNotes 5 in comparison to Notability. In conclusion, is GoodNotes 5 good enough to get me to switch over and use it as my primary note-taking app? And I think for me, the answer is going to be no. Although GoodNotes has a lot of good features sort of separate to each other, it doesn't package them into one finished product that combines all those good features and makes an app that I would want to use on a daily basis. What I wish would happen is that Notability would adopt those two features of the eraser that just gets used once and switches back to the pen, and then also having your favorite colors stacked at the top of the toolbar. I hope you guys have found this video useful. I hope it's given you a little bit more of an insight into comparing GoodNotes and Notability Notability so that you guys can hopefully make a better informed decision about which one you want to purchase and use as your note-taking app. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. That's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!